So we're dealing with understanding the office of the husband, right? Now, the first, the, the first key word in that is that is an office. And, you know, we perceive God better when we understand the concept that he attaches to things. Like we began to extract from um, Genesis 2, you see very clearly that um, God intended, you know, creation in the plural sense from the beginning. The first things God said about creating mankind was in the plural, not in the singular sense. That's why I don't agree with the teachers who teach about the woman being an afterthought. You know, um, the fact that we had lunch after breakfast or the lunch we would have this afternoon is not an afterthought. It was already scheduled. It's, it's in the meal plan, you know, so that when we get to that point, it is not that we just thought of it. Like, hey, we're hungry. Is there lunch? Come and see. No, it was in the plan. All right. So the woman is not an afterthought in that sense. But God, um, if, if you look at the nature of even earthly offices, you know, uh, there's order. There's how you take the oath of office. Like if you come into executive positions, for instance, if you come into executive positions, for instance, uh, have you wondered why in executive oath taking, the vice president takes oath before the president? In fact, I, I used to jokingly say during inauguration that if something just happens between the swearing in of the vice president and the president. The person actually in charge <laughs> is the vice president. If something just happens at that moment that requires executive command and he cannot take his oath because by law, the tenure of the president handing over would have ended. So the only person on an oath of office is the vice who had been sworn in. You know, so when God structures things, we can't understand that thing until we go back to the structure he gives. All right? Now, I won't go back to certain things we have dealt with from scratch. Um, when we talked about Adam being on a command, you know, Adam having instructions, that's already, I mean, something we've established. Now, we're going to look at the role of the husband specifically now because the word husband itself cannot be understood in itself. Husband is understood in relation to a relationship that created it. So at that stage, you're not dealing with image and likeness of God. That is basic. That is elementary. So by the time you touch the office of the husband, you cannot but talk about the wife because the office exists because of the wife. And that's why a husband becomes mean, unromantic, wicked, and outside God's will, when he's deploying his everything, does not regard the woman involved, which is the common mistake of the male man. See, uh, I have sat with people counseling who don't even know that everything about them being in that marriage is because they have a wife. So I am this and that way and this and that. I'm like, shut up. That's, that, that's not what you should be talking about. Like, the essence of who you are in that context of that marriage has everything to do with who she is and how she fares. The moment that's off the table, everything will finish. That means he can actually cohabit with her and not be in the office of the husband. So the question is, yes, I put a woman at home. Am I occupying the office? You know how we bitterly complain when our chief executive travels? <laughs> whether he handed over power, whether he didn't hand over power, who has power, who is doing what, who is not doing what. Because it's an office. It's beyond him. And that's why even in law, there are offices that you sue the office, not the person. Because the person can change, but the office stands. So if you have a problem in federal government or Nigeria, I sue the attorney general because the chief law officer. But you don't sue him in the name of the occupant of the office because the office is bigger than the person. It's just like uh, our local uh, proverbial soldier go, soldier come, barak remain, barak day. Praise God. So in considering that, we look at Ephesians 5, uh, from verse 25, I'm reading the message translation. Husbands, first of all, identity. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives. The first question there is that there's an assumption that you love your wife. The next question is now what is love? And the Bible says God is love. That means to understand the disposition God wants you to have towards your wife, you have to know the characteristics of God. 
What are the characteristics of God? Husbands, love your wife. If I let me read it in another way. Husbands, go all out in your God for your wife. Because God is love. Go all out in your God for your wife. Don't go all out in your flesh for your wife. Don't go all out in your temper for your wife. Don't go all out in your anger for your wife. Go all out in your God for your wife. Because God is love. In essence, approach her with the characteristics of God. And the instruction is very specific. Husbands, comma. <laughs> Don't I say? Husband Genesis, comma. Husband Nancre, comma. Husband Geno, comma. The addressee <laughs> and addressor <laughs> are known. There's an instruction coming. Who the instruction is going to is not in doubt. He's not written. He's not one of the scripture that, like uh, when we quote uh, Timothy, where he says, "He that cannot provide for his household." There is a big debate. He wasn't speaking to just men. He was speaking about everybody. Somebody argued with me. He was even showing me scriptures, versions, translations to prove. I said, "I'm not arguing." I'm now, okay, I agree. I'm teaching it to men. So let me just fix them inside. And let's not argue again. But when we read scripture in context, we know the person where we want to talk to. Husbands, go all out in your love. <laughs> I know there are single men here too who are about to marry. <laughs> it's not husbands. Go all out in your erection. You know, sometimes some men are only humble when they are <laughs> humility. <laughs> like I wrote recently, <laughs> it amazes me, especially as a counselor. Couple are quarreling, quarreling, but she's carrying belly. When did you have time to, <laughs> to break the quarrel and, <laughs> and to participate <laughs> in something that's so intimate? <laughs> If I know the word, ceasefire ceasefire agreement. (laughs) 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 Yay! Ceasefire! Ah! This is the kind of rema you say, see. (laughs) Oh my God. Ceasefire! (laughs) And you know, in fact, let me me crack a joke I've heard about that. Because it's not a joke, it's a very very serious thing you just said. Um, (laughs) A couple were quarreling and not talking. So in the night, the man began to approach the throne of grace. Uh, the wife just told him, I thought we were quarreling. The man said, they are not quarreling. <laughs> 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 we are quarreling. They are not quarreling. They are quarreling. The officers are quarreling. But the office is not quarreling. Hey! Man only. Man only. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so when we begin to x-ray things like this, because the truth is what man male needs is positive pressure. And the word of God is positive pressure. See, on our own we self-destruct. We're so powerful. See, it will take less than a week for you to condition your wife to know you don't come home on time. It will start with quarrel. It will end with cry. (laughs) That's the truth. Her position, maritally speaking, is weaker than yours. First Peter 3 is so clear. Very clear. She's, so that it's our subjecting ourselves to the pressure of the word of God like this that puts us in check. In fact, a man that is not checked by the word of God while being a Christian will damage his home. Exactly as Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. A love marked. That means when you look at the characteristics of the kind of love. Now, I I love the way scripture goes. Scripture begins to give us an insight into how God does it. Because Christ is God. So he begins to tell you exactly. So I don't need, if I need a model to be a husband, and I've asked this to ladies both in public and private meetings, and I'm shocked at the response. I tell them to just for a moment imagine that they are married to Jesus. That's how our wives should feel privileged 
when our names are called? What should mark their response? Is that I married a good man? And not just, you know, there's public speaking when you want to describe your spouse mm. to just cover your shame. Mm. Mm. There's that one. But there's what is real, what is factual. What's based on fact, like a feed of evidence. It's facts. It's not, uh, eh, state the facts. I know as a fact that, you know, that's where I took a challenge from. It's a challenge I challenge myself. When I say people just feel, no, it's because everything is perfect. That's I say, no, that's not true. I state it so that I can give me the right pressure. I say, God forbid the day that my marriage is better on social media than at home. Because my marriage is actually very beautiful on social media. Very beautiful. I know people who, when they hail my marriage, even me, I wonder, which marriage are you talking about? Not because we are trying to pretend, but because we are called to both teach it and try to show it. So there's a lot of show going on. But I can tell you, catching up to the show. <laughs> That's why I don't lie to people when we teach. I've been at meetings where I tell you, we just came out of a misunderstanding with ourselves on the road to this meeting. Is that real? But what should be my... See, let's never pretend about it. The pressure to miss it is daily. Even Satan left Jesus for a while. So just in case you finish this intense man only, and from the pickup point, you will have misunderstanding. It's not because you are not with God. But when destiny is short, Satan begins to wait at strategic points. A marriage is a strategic point. So, exactly as Christ did for the church. Before we even go into the characteristic, what did Christ do for the church? When you read scripture, the Bible says, why were yet sinners? That means I am called to an office where my wife does not receive what she deserves, but what I'm commanded. My office is an office where my wife should not receive from me what she deserves, but what I am commanded. So my action is dictated by my command, not her action. That's what the Bible says, that a soft answer turns away wrath. In essence, the answer was regardless of the wrath. Mm -hmm. So, and I divert the wrath because I chose my answer. And my answer was not a response. Hmm, God, help me. May we understand this in context of scripture. God is not a very responsive God. If he was, the number of people who have accused him, that if God is alive, why is Boko Haram killing people? God will be inconsistent if he's as responsive as man wants to make him. So he sits so strong on his principles. If you want to go to hell, man, you go to hell and God will be sipping tea. Not because he wants you, the word is already clear. It's not his wish that any should perish, but some will perish. Because they chose it. And God will be sitting on his throne unmoved. What you have chosen, enjoy. That's why he has elevated his word above his own name. Like I was saying in one of the teachings, even his name cannot open certain doors when his principle is against that door opening. So it, it's so critical to begin to see this. So my calling, this is tough on the flesh, man. Because at the point where your wife may be stepping on you, you have the capacity not just to respond but to complicate her life. At that moment, it's not just an answer. You can walk away. And see, you know, we, we can't, it's not about divorce. Because I keep telling people what is worse than divorce is an imploded Christian marriage. Mm -hmm. We can't walk away because what do we mean we tell pastor church? Mm -hmm. So everything is messed up, but we just smile and come to church. There are people, the honest truth is their marriage only exists within the four walls of church. Both of them serving well or serving the Lord, blah, blah, blah. But the marriage is effectively non-existent in the Christian sense. Some go as far as they have already moved into different rooms if they have rooms to move. Do you know the number of people have counseled where husband or wife have been sleeping on couch in the sitting room because they don't have another room to show the separation for months? Months. The number of people I've spoken to. How can I be married and you are sitting in front of the council? People have no access for three years. Ah. Two years. Yes. I'm not kidding. Two years. Three years. Yes. I can't. See, I tell people, if, if, if I don't even know how to look perfect love, liberty, the things I hear daily, even my own marriage will just fail. 
I just feel hopeless. Daily. I'm not kidding. Because of men only, the number of people waiting on who have left me a message, waiting for a response, okay. And first thing Monday morning, I'm in cut of a pay. So it's until later on Monday that I start attending to some things. So I tell people, if he's hearing bad news daily, it's normal. That's why when some news are making around now, they want to change the whole nation because of it. I just, they laugh. You people are just coming to hear things. We'll be hearing it. Not that we trivialize it, but these things exist. And that's why we teach with such passion as we teach. Just like when Paul says, you know, when we see the terror to come, we warn men. Let's be honest. Everybody in this room is still young enough to have at least 30 active years ahead of them. There's too long a time ahead of us not to adhere to the truth. We'll just suffer. Because Pekiri and not let him marry, see him and not go to sleep. So if we don't take our place in the office of the husband, we're in trouble. Because things will be messed up in our hands. And I keep saying, when I speak to believers, I'm not talking divorce. Divorce is too far. It's too far. We're talking about experiencing life or struggling with life. So it's a love marked by giving, not getting. Actually, in Christian love and in the office of the husband, love should be a harvest for you, not a thing you demand. A harvest of your seed sown. The Bible says when he sees the travail of his soul, he shall be satisfied. Christ's satisfaction comes out of the harvest of something he has already done. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. So if you are not feeling the vibe and, you know, the beauty of your wife's love coming back at you, you need to ask yourself, what seed have I sown? Because inherent in your instruction is your harvest. Christ's love makes the church whole. Too many husbands not understanding the office of the husband demand their wife to be something that they have not made her. If you didn't contribute to her making, don't demand it. God demands of us what he made us. He tells you to step in the same shoe. His words evoke her beauty. This office does not accommodate of abuse by any means. Your words have to be laced with salt, carefully selected. If your words are emotional, you are dead. You will kill yourself. Hamza, let's do something. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping certain scripture because I wanted to stay here. But just go to 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. For context, we'll come back here. 1 Peter 3, uh, verse 7. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we need to watch it. Watch our words. Look out very closely for, you know. Uh, we'll pick some things from 1 Peter 3. Yeah. We'll start from verse 7, where it gives the specific <coughs> instruction to the man. Then we'll go to the general instructions to both from verse 8. No, yeah. The same goes for you husbands. Now, let me explain this same goes for you. Of course, scriptures were not written in chapters. Chapterization came in just for, to be able to um, reference the book. Yeah, exactly. So, um, somewhere around chapter 2, he began to give specific instructions to the church. And in that chapter 2, um, he gave specific instructions to servants. Now, Something was central to the theme of the instruction. He told servants to honor their masters for Christ's sake. Not for the sake of their masters, but for the sake of the Christ. When he came to chapter 3, the same theme continued to the women. To submit to their husband. If I was indeed in chapter 3, verse 1, 2 to 6. He says some. Even though they, know, they do not obey, submit. <laughs> Apostle Paul, what kind of instruction is that? Is it Apostle Paul, Peter said? Because he was talking in context of as unto the Lord. So when he says the same goes for you, husband, he was keeping to the introductory theme. That all I am telling you right now is as worship unto the Lord. Be good husbands to your wives. Honor them. Honor them. This is one of the ones lacking in most people occupying the office today. Because we want to dis demand respect and honor without realizing that there's an instruction to directly honor them. 
It's a delight in them. Ewo. Me, I'm not romantic. I'm just like that. Delight in them. What does it mean to delight? I know the people that delight in coffee in this room. I know the people that delight in eating well in this room. They don't play with their eating. They delight in it. I know the people that delight in premiership. Yes. I know the people that delight in Champions League. For say this man only fall inside Champions League. Who for schedule the matches inside the man only. <laughs> delight. Show your love and pleasure in her. Make her the object of your affection. Straight. It's not, there's no forming in this man. It's not because I'm a weak man. No. Husbands, specific instruction. Delight in them. Delight in them. He said, as women, they lack some of your advantages. They lack some of your advantages. It's very clear you have an unfair advantage. Don't mess them up because of it. It's your word that is final say in the house. I know. You are the one that calls the shot. I know. You are very likely the one that is even the most economically viable. I know. They are the one that had to carry children, do this, and stay back home, trying to make the home. So sometimes you look at your wife like she's dull. She's not dull. If you think she's dull, be a homemaker. Stay back with two children. You will run crazy. You realize that her brain capacity for trouble is much. Then you return and add your own. After she has survived the children you gave her, then you just see her like she just sitting at home. She's not just sitting at home. Stay there and make a home. My brothers, let's say the truth. If they give you one week to determine what people eat, you will run out of ideas. You'll be tired. They lack some of your advantages. But in the new life of God's grace, now this is the kind of husband he's speaking to. You are equals. <laughs> In the new life of God's grace, you are equals. <laughs> this is the equality. See, I tell people, see, when people argue against God, I laugh. When people say Christianity is oppressive to women, I laugh. No, men who don't know what the command is are oppressive to women. Simple. Even all those accusations, they use the word of God. Look, it's actually difficult to use the word of God to oppress anybody. Except you are not reading it or misquoting it. You are equals. Treat your wives then as equals so your prayer don't run aground. Suffering for doing <laughs> Praise God. So your prayers don't run aground. I told somebody, somebody came to me, you know, uh, when you teach the word of God, you have Bible scholars who are ready to argue with you all the time. Somebody came to my inbox trying to find out if this scripture, are you telling me if this scripture means that you will not, uh, 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 how, can, how can God predicate as we pray out? Uh, let, let him hear my view. I already saw his view. So I told him, by the grace of God, I have read this passage in so many translations. I'm yet to find one ordinary meaning of word that gives me another meaning other than your prayer will not be answered. I say I've attempted, actually I've attempted. I've read, 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 read. Whether God chose it as a means of not answering prayer, I don't know. The Bible says so. And they have not released the revised edition. <laughs> the council of heaven have not met and say, you know what? That passage is draconian to men. Shall we revise it? So in my little understanding, therefore means there's an angel that is monitoring my treatment of my wife and presenting a report when my prayer arrives. So my, <laughs> so my prayer is arriving, the report is arriving. In the business world, what do you call something that affects another thing? <laughs> if, okay, good. Let me go back to what we're doing uh, which day. So if, if somebody is pitching an idea to you, you ask for is it feasibility report, whatever, with due diligence, have you done this, have you done that? If you know much, you go give the idea something. You don't give the idea something now. So God will just say, you know, and the book will find out. Say, sir, this money, where this guy they ask for? If you get this money, why don't we see him? Say, eh, hey. he denied. <laughs> denied. <laughs> don't punch it. Don't punch it. Say, he won't punch it. He won't punch it. 
The angel just say, the way you like with baby, if he pots, he don't, he don't leave <laughs> wife, oh. He don't leave your wife, oh. Oh my God, praise God. You know, it, it's so critical. It's so critical when we look at these things. Absolutely critical. I know the word of God is so simple. I mean, we're just gisting it. Looking at as it is. There's no... <laughs> All right, now, I'll do 8 to 12 for a reason. 8 to 12 covers both, but I'll do it for a reason. It says, summing up, all right, be agreeable. Now, this is to all of this is not to the woman. Yes, our ideas are strong, but are we agreeable? Can your wife disagree with you and the house will not come down? Say be agreeable. Have the capacity to agree. Why? The entire marriage relationship itself runs on Amos 3.3. Two cannot work together except they be agreed. And the fact that two cannot work together except they be agreed does not mean you don't have difference of opinion. But that you can find the meeting point. Be agreeable. Be sympathetic. One of the places where you know somebody stepping off the office of the husband is when the pulse of their wife no longer moves them. And a lot of men come there. Because you have seen her so much in her period that hurts. You get so used to it. You are still lying down there. Sympathy just goes off. Be careful when your wife's tears become nothing to you. I've counseled couples that the woman gets emotional. I know men don't necessarily have to express it that way. And the man doesn't just kind of slow down on the counseling, in the counseling process. The man even gets enraged and begins to talk that. He thinks it's by tears. This is what she does. This is what she does. If you know how many times I've seen that, you won't believe it. Number one, let's start with, it's not the best that you're ever sitting in front of a counselor to go this far. I don't pretend to people. There are different dimensions of counseling. There's when we are sharing wisdom. There's when we are sharing normal concerns. There's when we are dealing with dysfunction. That last one, God doesn't easily let his children go there. Is it because my marriage is perfect, I've not sat with my wife and my pastor or my father and the Lord and be solving the problem? No. But because we have been trained to be able to solve most of it. So it must really be something out of our control. And it is not every time that it's out of our control that it's an embarrassing thing. Do you get what I mean? We may actually have the misunderstanding, need a, 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 an authority figure to correct us, but it doesn't mean it's now I'm beating her every day or I'm, I'm this, or something that, oh boy, you know this sin. Why are you doing it? Do you understand? So she forgave, she forgave, she forgave. You now made habit. No, that one is shameful. Do you understand? So, I'm talking situations that are tough, that should not even be in the Christian context. You're sitting in front of me, your wife is busting like tears, and you're still me. In fact, you're now mocking. I'm not talking one situation, I'm talking several. I open the mouth, I just sit there like, what? What? No, I can sit anywhere to receive wisdom. But my wife is crying. It doesn't break the man again. It doesn't move again. Nothing is, it doesn't, nothing again. Like what? How? Where did you come to that point? How did their heart become that hard? All these things are common. So you want to look at it. In fact, I tell men, because when I'm saying this part, a lot of Christian men know how to say, no, no, I can't, no, no, don't talk about that. That's too far. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. But going to the normal things of life, where you cannot just feel her pulse at all, where what matters to her doesn't matter to you. See, malice will not stretch if you are sympathetic. Because a person that you love not talking to you hurts. Sympathy will take away certain conduct. Say be sympathetic. Be loving. Say be compassionate. Have compassion. That's why I tell people, charity that does not begin at home is calm. It's well in Africa. If I, if I take statistics now, like 90 something percent of the fathers that train the people in this room, the opinion people have of them outside is like they are heavenly. But at home, hmm, it is well. You know, sometimes you just go online. When some people are healing your father, you're just like, who are you talking about? Is he my father or Ibu's father? <laughs> Say, be humble. That goes for all of you, no exceptions. No retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm. 
Instead, bless. That's your job, to bless. This is why Ephesians 5 can boldly tell you how your words should be. Instead, bless. That's your job. He said you will be a blessing and also get a blessing. Whoever wants to embrace life, go ahead, scroll, and see good days, and see the day filled up with good. Here is what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. Snub evil and cultivate good. Run after peace for all you are worth. <laughs> Husbands, are we listening? Run after peace for all you are worth. Because some people sitting in this room, next weekend you will be coming to the mountain from the hotel where you carry your wife just to pursue some more peace. Everybody just pretended it's not them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not that there's crisis, but you have not been paying enough for peace. You just carry her. This weekend, no cooking, no washing, no stressing. If you have children, See where the children are going to be, you and I alone. Hope you're not on your period. <laughs> Order what you want. I punch it. <laughs> it billion. Eat what you want, I'll punch it. See, no woman can withstand what I just said. Yes. Say forget calorie. You're a fit woman. When you finish, you come back and exercise later. <laughs> and by the way, don't over lose weight. Yeah. When I hold you, I want to hold something. <laughs> why, did I start, why did I say this? Women are already dealing with esteem issues. Yes. The men just open man and complicate it. I used to say it jokingly, and I mean it. The word F-A-T should never leave the mouth of a man to any woman. You have just created emotional crisis, depression. The difficulty women have with accepting their body, <laughs> oh God, both those who have body and those who don't have, you go fear. Very difficult. And their body changes are so apparent, unlike our own that is like, we're just going. Even a man that leaves six pack to amusement park is gradual. <laughs> It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. But for a woman, it's just spam. A woman just gets pregnant, can't even look at herself in the mirror. They are not disappointing her with what you say. Go all out. So by the time, you know, when the Bible said delight in her, okay, let me confess, all of us are here, so let's not pretend. This is why many of our wives don't believe we are delighting in them because we are delighting in it. For those of you that are single, please, we are fighting a battle. Help yourself before you get there. All of us married here, no, no exception. I speak by the spirit and by the flesh. They have complained at one time or the other. Especially that we are not entering crypto. <laughs> for, some of, for some of us, it's not phone, it's laptop. <laughs> Your device is bigger. <laughs> Delight in her. So she wants that moment where you say, you know what, baby? Mm. I just shut down my phones. Mm. God, <laughs> Babe, I'm fully offline this entire weekend. That's right. That's right. Your time is valuable. Yes. Fully. Oh. <laughs> say, run after peace for all you are worth. How much are you worth? So you can give it all for peace. God looks on all these with approval. Listen. <laughs> God looks on all this with approval. Listening and responding well to what he's asked. But he turns his back on those who do evil things. In essence, anything opposite all I've been saying is evil. Scroll on. <laughs> 13. I'll read 13 to about 15. If with the heart and soul you are doing good, do you think you can be stopped? <laughs> because what we're dealing with right now is the heart and soul. We're dealing with conviction issues. He said, do you think you can be stopped if you think like this? 
Even if you suffer for it, you are still better off. <laughs> you know it takes suffering not to respond when you're in anger. It takes suffering not to act in pain. Yeah, it takes suffering. Um, even if you suffer for it, you are still better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought. Through thick and thin, keep your heart at attention in adoration before Christ. The opposition there is not your wife. It's talking about the devil. So you understand your place in this battle. That this attack is on, on this marriage. Don't give the opposition a, a chance. Too thick and thin, keep your heart at attention in adoration to Christ, your master. Uh -huh. Be ready to speak up and tell everyone who asks you why you are living the way you are. And always with utmost courtesy. Keep a clear conscience before God so that when people throw mud at you, none of it will stick. They'll end up realizing that they are the ones who need a bath. Scroll, scroll, scroll. They'll end up realizing that they are the one who need a bath. It's better to suffer for doing good if that's what God wants than to be punished for doing bad. That's what Christ did definitely. Suffered because of other sins. The righteous one for the unrighteous. He went through it all, was put to death, and then made alive to bring us to God. This is what Ephesians 5 is referring to. Let's go back to Ephesians 5. <laughs> the example is so clear. Now we stick. Praise God. So in the office of the husband is an office that comes with his own manual. It's part of the manual we're looking at. Because every office has terms of reference. For instance, now, Nankri cannot declare a state of emergency in Nigeria. He's not in the office. Yet. He's not in the office yet. Because as we speak, the number of Nigerians who have an opinion about how Nigeria should go Go to 25. <laughs> but all they have is opinion, no office. Mm. But we occupy the office of the husband. So why don't we execute the powers? See, my brother, apart from Nigeria, where when traffic situation builds, a civilian now becomes traffic control. Mm -hmm. That's an office. That's an office. And that's why they, when the man stands there and he gives an instruction by just his hand. Mm. So the question is, are you manifesting in your office or abusing your office? We use that for politicians. Why don't we use it for ourselves because we're in offices? Am I using or abusing my office? If this is not my conduct, then I'm abusing the office. There's a term of reference for my occupation of that office. He said his words evoke her beauty. This is what took us all the way back to 1 Peter 3. His words evoke her beauty. In essence, it carries the right esteem to her. It delivers confidence to her. Everything he does and says is designed. Scroll, please. Now, you don't... Aha, uh -huh, there are people here, Pastor Emma, you know, does fashion design. You know what it takes to design. You know, even this man only. I just sent the handbill to him. Told him to give me something. Let's see for shirt. The moment I sent it back, there was no argument. Go ahead. He designed something. Everything he does, number one, and says is designed. If there's a service in church this morning and you just carry, you just buy a wrapper, and give your wife this morning. Say, the same people should buy this wrapper. It's Women's Day. You have created crisis with what you bought. Even if you bought it for one billion. Because it's not designed. It's just raw material. Everything it does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. The focus is her. The focus is not you. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. This will shock me, but I will confess the truth to her. My wife's salvation right now has something to do with my leadership. 
Have you ever been angry with somebody and they are praying and you are irritated? Why are you praying? Because when we mess up the leadership, part of what we are skewing in their memory is the place of God. They look at us with confusion. I say I'm a Christian. I say I this. And I'm going through this much pain. And that's how husbands ought to love their wives. Scroll, let's go to the selfish part now. They are really doing themselves a favor since they are already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. He feeds and pampers it. Your wife is out pampering and it's from you. I know some of us may not know what it costs to do spa treatment in Abuja or Masseuse. You know, but here's the deal. And pampering is in different forms and shapes. Comes in different packages. See, eh? until we deliberately taking our wives as a project sit down to orchestrate, to plan her when not in the office of husband. What does our president do? Eat national cake. The reason we are disappointed is what plan do you have for us? The reason certain events will happen nationally and we are disappointed in not address the nation is because we expect you to have a plan. Like that movie we saw, like Arrows, when the man say, I got this, what happened? The woman put her confidence in his words. Then they got into the marriage and the man didn't got it. There's any English like that. He didn't got it at all. Oh boy, you say you got it. Then you are now upset. You know, it's so easy to use the word absent fathers, forgetting that they are absent husbands. Very easy. Absent fathers. Absent fathers are just a product of absent husbands. They are used to being away. And it's in heaven we'll, we'll finally clarify. But we get already perspective into the fact, we get some perspective already into the fact that Adam was absent when Eve spoke with the serpent. Whether he was standing by, taking a long walk, or even standing there and keeping quiet, or in absence. One of the things you realize happens easily in homes is wives requesting or demanding that husbands take charge in certain areas. That's why when it has to do with children and other things. And one of the commonest responses you get are men who are not exactly ready to take charge. Who find every excuse, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm, I'm, okay, I'll think about that. Um, I'm coming, I'm coming, coming. You are coming, but you are going. Pamper her. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his own body. And this is why a man leaves his father and mother and cherishes his wife. The word there is the word cherish. And cherishes his wife. See, finish doesn't get into it. He cherishes his wife. They are no longer two. They become one flesh. Cool. This is a huge mystery and I do not pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. If that is clear, then how a husband should treat a wife is already clear. Because that's the parallel we draw from. I tell people I'm not the model. No matter how I teach, no matter what I try to show. I'm not the standard, rather, not the model. I can try to model it just like Paul says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. But the standard is so clear. So how do I judge myself? I judge myself by always holding up the standard. When the serpent began to beat them, what did he tell them to do? He told him to lift up the brazen serpent. If you look at it, you'll be saved. When marriage begins to happen, what's my salvation? I look at the standard. Because the word of God is not just for pampering. It's for instruction. It's for correction. It's for rebuke. 
So when we have forums like this, it's not that. Look at this one. Oh, you say, I share the word of God. He go chuck you, but he just pretend all is well. <laughs> just, just stretch. Keep a straight face. When your heart will say, oh boy, <laughs> I need to go home and make some moves. <laughs> God, I beg. I need to make some moves. You know, in our last class of uh, the School of Marriage, this last month, what we've been doing is each month we take a focus. We're teaching on emotional intelligence. And I said some things which I was saying in this context of the office of the husband. Your wife's emotion is your primary responsibility to manage. Primary. You know, uh, relationship teachers will just go online and say, uh, your happiness is not your husband, it's not your wife. It's true. Even me, I said it. I'm joking. The day you enter that marriage, your happiness has something to do with two of you. <laughs> If you read all of this, the primary responsibility of their emotional state is your responsibility. My wife's emotional state is a report card on what I'm doing. Why? Man became a living soul. That's the seat, you know, that's the seat of his intellect, emotion, and all of that. And guess what? Emotions run on actions. Actions define emotion. That's why people who are not well taught can't last in marriage. Because Gary Chapman puts the emotional phase, emotional phase of love to two years. Two years and it's over. The emotional phase. So people wonder, why is the high gone? What do I do? I don't even know what to do again. I don't understand my life again. I don't, you understand that. The problem is that you were on a wave. On a wavelength. You know, a cruising. You know, if you carry radio right now and tune it, the moment you hit some frequency, you pick signal. At that stage, you are not even tuning. You are immersed in the signal. <laughs> then as the marriage progress, you realize that you need to tune to get a signal. So at that point, ah, I said one, I think the day before yesterday, I was just laughing. I said, see confusion. What do you do? Even the live session we did yesterday, what do you do? I'm no longer feeling it. Oh, really? You generate the feeling. You are a generator. <laughs> when there's this power, what do we do? We put on something. So a lot of people start the marriage with public power. Lavishly available. You know, it's when you are... See, imagine... Let me tell you the truth. You know, this joke I watch, or rather it's a common comedy, when the man is freezing in a hotel room and the attendant comes and says, can you off the AC? No, that is you. You know how much I pay for this hotel? See, I pay 75,000 a night. No, that is you. No, that is you. I'm on top of my money. See, he's under blanket, he's breathing. No, that is you. So let me put it in context. So a man, let's put the early phase of marriage or even relationship to when you're in a place where you don't pay the bills. Mm. That's where you leave all the lights on while you're going out. Mm. You leave AC on from morning. You're coming back 6 p.m. You say you want to condition the room. <laughs> but you now move from there to your own house and they give you a meter. <laughs> and you are even a salaried person, no side job. Okay. Where your budget is strict. My dear brother, <laughs> that's where you see a man. There is light. But you see food. <laughs> he wants to look for something. He sees a full light. Because he knows that at that moment. <laughs> the cost of the bulb versus the cost of the charging his phone. It is better to use this phone. <laughs> I don't know what happened in other people's houses. In my house, for instance, I am the one demanding offering of light because every other person does not understand. <laughs> I don't dare abroad. They do data for me and my wife because we have shared data. My wife does not know how to load data. I'm not exhorting, I'm telling you. We are on a shared data. In fact, there's no chip I've made abroad that I've not changed because I'm part of the problem why the data must go faster. She's doing video calls, she's doing this. So, 
sometimes I'll just call her like, baby, did you notice I actually renewed the data yesterday? <laughs> She's not aware. She just said, oh, no wonder I was offline at the party. You know what I was like? <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes I'm like, ah, this one, this is the common SF. Like, babe, have you been doing something heavy lately? Oh, baby, sorry. I said, no, I'm not saying you should say so. I just wanted to let you know that I have a, I, I paid the price again. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's so critical. Absolutely critical. To come to that point where we realize that your emotion is not just my responsibility, that this state of your emotion is a report card on my action. Because it's emotions that gen it's actions that generate emotion. See, let me be honest. A lot of people, wives, that people say are difficult are not as difficult. But they have husbands who are not loving. See, it takes an exceptionally possessed wife to respond negatively to actions when the actions are right. The wife must be exceptionally possessed with something. I'll give you an example. If you think it's a joke, try it from here right now. Punch something as it. If I order a married man, bring out your phone. Even if it's one case, send your wife something now. Thank you. I'm doing two. Whatever it is, punch something. Punch something. Every man. Every, every man. And every, every fiancé, punch something. Punch something. As far as the good. Thank, thank you for saying that. Because I wanted to use you as the signing, signing, signing. We must punch something. Just say, just to say, I love you this Sunday. Oh. Punch something. Today is Mother's Day. Some churches, including my own. Ah, rebo do bo bo. Hey, let me sound like Nigerian preachers. Do something that will touch you. <laughs> Feel it. That will cost you something. Calibra do shete. Araba ganaga. Punch something. Even if you start card, punch. Bishop, I'm not seeing you punch anything. My phone is not here. Find his phone for him. <laughs> punch something. Punch something. Punch something. Punch something. Just to say I love you this Mother's Day. Ah. <laughs> Bishop Amakri, find his phone for him. His wife has been accusing me to bring the husband back. <laughs> Let her know that men only, men only is about more. <laughs> hey, level, level, level. Yes, I'll punch my own. Punch it. Glory oh, with a good narrative. Praise God. Something is about to happen to the emotion. You know, and let me say this. When she calls to act like, you send me something, I say, just, just, just for you. Hey. You say, I'm married man. <laughs> Praise God. So it's so critical, you know, to realize that action. Nagri, who are you sending me something to like this? I've not been told. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So it's so important. You know, the moment I begin to take responsibility, I find myself doing more to make sure she is fine than demanding that she is fine, which is a common problem of men. So you're trying to demand that she's happy. You cannot demand happiness. You generate happiness. It's not a demand. Hey, you're not always excited when I come home. Excited about what? You just bring more pressure. You come, she has to start food. Hey, that's when you remember they have not swept house. Do you know how they arrived at not sweeping house? Do you get what I mean? So it's, you, you, you create something. That's the office we are occupying, you know. It's an office. If you work and your boss doesn't pay at the end of the month, you do smiling with him. No. Even, if you, even if you manage to smile for one month, but the second month says, sir, we need to talk. <laughs> that's, the, that's the boss you could not look at before. Yes. But you, he has so failed that you can now summon him, sir. We need to talk, sir. And he's like, all is not well. That's if you're even humble. If you don't even want to be humble, you send a text, thinker. Sir, I'm not. Praise God. So it's so important to take responsibility for how your wife reacts. Take responsibility for her reaction. I'll say this in closing. 
So I always teach this way. Five minutes more. Okay, thank you. I always teach this way that a man needs to take the wife like a project. Mm. An emotional project and schedule her. I'll just use this remaining five minutes to give some stories. Some of you have heard me say it. So 2019 was going to be our ninth anniversary in marriage. And for some good reason, some part I did not know at the time, God was just moving on me. The part I knew was, we had come through some hard season from 2017, 2018, and she had been a very good wife. Coincidentally, plus all of that, ministry-wise, we still even traveled to South Africa 2018 to do ministry and all. But I had this rush of thought to make my wife happy. So anniversary is December, as at July, because now when you begin to take the emotion of your wife as a project, you become strategic. Because sometimes, like I said, when we're talking about money, there are things you don't do because you think you can't do them just because you have not planned them. So what happens is when you begin to plan, you now realize that you can afford more than you can do or what, what I thought you could. So from July, I got in touch with my friend who is a travel agent. Let me use Nancre and Genomes or PSS, Space Moss More. So we organized the trip for this December and began to pay Moss More. Honest truth. You know, I mean, at this time, it's not like we have traveled now, we have been traveling, we have gone to different countries. But what had happened across two years was tough. And she was just a good woman. Good, good woman, good woman. So we began to do PSS. Of course, it was all secret to her. I just told her something special is coming. I selected Dubai. In all our travels, she had never been to the Dubai that practically everybody has gone to. Oh, you too. That's where I carry your wife next. Yeah. And I see. Calibra da Casa. Don't share this video to her. So, <laughs> eh, you know, I just kept telling her, ah, surprise, blah, blah, blah. I went to her immediate boss that I know. My wife works in the federal government establishment. I went to her immediate boss and secured the permission. Arranged it. So, got family and friends to the house for us to unveil what the surprise was. That very week, there's no pressure on my wife. What is it? I told her to even carry swimming trunk. When she over pressure me, I said, we're going to Lagos. Since you don't want to let me, but carry swimming trunk. We'll go somewhere. They opened the surprise. The way my wife was screaming that day, you think the Holy Spirit fell on her fresh. As she was screaming, I reminded her, we're running late for going to the airport. Hey. I was feeling like a king enthroned. <laughs> Say we're running late, baby. <laughs> Children were already arranged. <laughs> Sammy did not shed. Nine years into forever. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. My pride was right. <laughs> he got to the airport, boarded. <laughs> the way we're shining, the air hostess, they had to ask us, that we're going for honeymoon. I said, honey, what? Nine years into forever. <laughs> uh. They were so moved by our love. We're flying economy. That's the, what I tell people. Even if it's engine, fly something. Fly something. Fly something. Fly something. Oh no. Don't fly blue, Jean. Guess what? These guys were so moved. They went and brought business class package of food and everything. Brought wine, I said, I know they drink and tea content. They say, Oh, I see, they just brought things. Mm. That's the day I knew that there's camera inside plane. Yes. They brought that camera, snapped us, printed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, brought out a card. They had some customized card mm. for celebrating people. Mm. Took it around. Emily. Yes, Emery. Pilots, hostess, host, Fine. all signed. There are different, there are 17 nationalities represented in that crew. Wow. Born anniversary, this one. We still have it at home with the picture. My wife said it was spinning. Spinning. People say women are not romantic, they don't love sex. You are joking. I won't say too much, they are single. Say. <laughs> well, what you are looking for is looking for you. <laughs> Dubai was kill and go. What is it? Listen to me, man. Ah! When, when that Dubai, just four days trip, even if I mess, my wife says romantic. <laughs> You see, your fat smells good. 
Praise God. I hope with these few points of mine, you are convinced. <laughs> Occupy the office. Punch something. <laughs> Praise God. Uncle Jenom, I yield the floor. Do we want to take one or two questions? Okay, okay, I think that would be good. Just pass the mic to him. Just uh, pa pass the mic to him. Woo. Okay. Yeah. Turn the camera at him now. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right. So, so um, 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 Hamza just indicated next. Yeah. Okay. okay. I noted this question that when you were talking about the fact that some ladies cry, and then there are men that show like, yeah, not just empathetic. You're not. It's not concerning you. So I, I'm saying. We also understand that some ladies are very emotional. So mm. at what because there are times that you see a lady cry and the reason why you want to leave that scene is not because you don't care, it's because you just can't handle it. So are you saying that if that kind of thing is happening, you still stay put and show it's like when the matter is not something that you feel is even worth crying for, say. Um, I love what you just said because one. your feeling that is it not worth it is an opinion. And there's a principle of law, uh -uh, oh boy, there's a principle of law I'll bring in here. Um, Genesis, Genesis will bear me witness in this. It is better, especially in criminal trial, it is better to let loose 10 criminals than to mistakenly convict one innocent man. I'm talking confirmed criminals or convicts. 10, go. Than to, in error, convict one innocent one. So the judge ought to warn himself if he wants to convict on certain kind of evidence, for instance, uncorroborated evidence, no matter how congent. The law is that the judge must warn himself. Do you get what I mean? And that's why in criminal trial in Nigeria, in our jurisdiction, uh, is proved beyond reasonable doubt. So the entire job of the defense is to look for where to punch holes of doubt in the mind of the judge, no matter how good the evidence looks, just create doubt. That's why people are always disappointed. Ha! Everybody think, convict him, convict him. No, wait, yes. A defense attorney will just be spending his time looking for how to create doubt. Loopholes. You have 15 persons testified. You look for all the inconsistencies in the 15. So it is better to assume she is hurting. I, I learned this lesson they had, we let not lie. Have you ever met people who are really sick, but because they look normal, you are wondering, like, are you exaggerating? Then the person dies. I've been in that situation. Because there are sicknesses that doesn't take a physical toll, as it were. But this person has been in hospital for two weeks. This person is crying. This person is pained. And I'm wondering, like, hope it's not exaggeration. Then the person dies, looking all normal. Do you get what I mean? So it's not to be blackmailed. Don't get it wrong. Whatever the point I have, I still have the point. But I need you in a particular state to, be, to address the point. Because there are actually people who use tears for manipulation. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, I won't act in disregard mm -hmm. of the pain you are feeling. So I can tell you, we'll talk about this later. I'm really sorry I hurt him. You have not admitted that, oh, yes, I'm wrong. Oh, so sorry. I made you cry. I didn't make you cry. You are hurting. So I'm, I'm really sorry. I really wish you weren't crying. At that point, I'm not insisting we must talk now. Nonsense. Be crying. When you finish crying, we'll talk now. Hey. Do you get? So that, that acknowledgement of the emotion, that acknowledgement of whatever she's going through, you know, that like, um, you're, just, you're just offering some succor. Because in the context of marriage, you are not enemies. You're just dealing with a situation. So your difference at that moment does not destroy your unity. If you get that, you have gotten the point. Praise God. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, so, you know, you know, yeah, you know the, uh, while you were talking, um, I was just thinking on my own personal question is sort of is resolved like we discussed it extensively wow. so then, then the other one i was going to ask was now is there a way for example what we all are learning now there are people who are who you expect to know for example or who have uh, 
who shared some of these th truths with you too but then because of by association now you now realize they are not leaving it out and you can foresee that there's there's an implosion coming if life has not arrived and by virtue of your for example association like marriage like birth now you cannot there are not people you can just uh, that you can insulate yourself how do you what do you do with this kind of circumstances okay um it's, it's actually a very strong question because a lot of time just like what um, bishop said about uh, imprinting yeah. um you need to first of all immunize yourself against that virus and the immunization is to continually put the truth in front of you because once evil begins to make sense to you on your way there gradually so um to be honest we're having more of an experience than coming to hear or see anything new in our christian work this weekend we're just we just positioned ourselves in a space where a new challenge is taken just listening to the business conversation yesterday me, I now read Ecclesiastes by myself. I went back up there and asked, where are the streams of income? Yes. Mm. I went back there thinking about the different things different person said. I said, they can't sense where this person get. You, you know, get head. <laughs> See this thing where this person talk. You know if you think. Can't you stretch? So, if it is that you have not had good teaching, that's not just why you're here this weekend. If it's that you have not been in a gathering where you enjoyed fellowship, that's not what I heard this week. But this Sunday morning, you could easily have been in church and enjoyed your service. But we have just put ourselves in one more place. You know, let's assume this is like fueling a, 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 a car. Yeah. You may have just taken fuel for six months. Yeah. That's beside the spiritual realities which can go way longer. Mm -hmm. But in terms of your resolve, your strength and all. So imagine plucking a good book in another two months' time. Blocking one other good seminar, like I'm speaking of the Mountain Conference next week. Imagine just making sure you punctuate, because for instance, I'm from a properly broken home, real, real break. I'm the express image of an emotionally abused soul. So I tell people, if I can find my way in life, nobody has an excuse. And what I am saying is the way. And insisting to plug things all the way of the journey. Plug in. I tell people, when I'm accepting schedule, the accepting schedule in church that makes me accept or deny invitation. A marriage enrichment seminar, I'm not going nowhere. The only way there can ever be a conflict is commitment I can't pull out of happens before it is fixed. I have my church calendar, both on laptop and on phone. Particularly pastors, itinerary of some things. Because those moments for me are personal to me. It's not I'm giving, giving, giving. Where am I taking? And that's actually the error of a lot of believers in this age. The arrogance to never take again. So we would always be surrounded by such people. But it's light that conquers darkness, not the other way around. So if we keep staying plugged, no matter their age, they will soon ask. I have my father's friends who insist I am their mentor in marriage. There's one, he has, even been, he has had marital issue in the past. But when he looks, you mentioned Chief, former minister. Okay, we were once in his building. Chief loves me with special love. The team even unsettled me at a point. Because I know the kind of running issues I've had with my own father. He doesn't hide his issues with his son. And when he speaks to me, he speaks to me, comparing him and me, and loving up on me. I've not seen him for some years now because the position he took in me and my father's matter, not to do me any, too much love. You, just, you know, the way others think. And I had to actually honor him at, that, at those times when he made certain things as instruction. You get what I mean? But that used to unsettle me a bit because he would go so direct. You know that generation, they know they like, you just go direct to the point. Bam, bam, bam. He's not among those who are mentor him or something, but the liking he took was there are certain consistencies he saw, certain patterns. He's like, God, this is the man. This is good. This is how that generation should be. And I have those, like I said, I'm talking grandparents who say, look, 
you have no idea how much I've been following you. Because once we are able to hold up a standard, then those influences we begin to now ask. Because forget when a man is struggling in his marriage and he sees another couple, first of all, they will you. They are just at the early phase. They don't know anything. They don't know anything. It's coming. It's coming. Then 10 years down the line, it didn't come. 15 years down the line, it didn't come. 20 years down the line, it didn't come. Say, so, oh boy, how did they do this thing now? That's the truth. That's it. Some people have given up on me. They have been waiting. But their weight is wasting. Because I am on a path. It's not, it's not by luck. It's by principle. <laughs> I enter that one. Uh, thank you.